Yo, 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 you just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast, Mogul Moves Only, with your boy, Big D the Mogul, a.k.a. Shook Diddy, a.k.a. Illuminati Jack, a.k.a. Big Thanos, a.k.a. Heaven on Earth, a.k.a. Dry Web Shardy Why because I'm good before the drip, I don't need no sauce, you on the dig? And I got a bunch of heavy hitters in the city right now, man. You see amazing movement going around in the city. But before I introduce my guests real quick, we tuning in to Mogul Moves, only the podcast right now at Mogul Media Studios. Um, if you're ever in need of any type of audio recording services such as podcasts, studio time, you're working on your next projects, doing voiceovers, things of that nature, please hit us up. Uh, you can reach us at on Instagram at Mogul Media Studios, or you can hit us up on the uh, website, Excuse me, Mogul Media LLC.com or hit up Team Mogul Media at gmail.com. Also, you can, if you'd like to be a guest on a podcast, please hit up the same email, Team Mogul Media at gmail.com. And y'all know what it is. Shout out to all my Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Podbean listeners, and all my YouTube followers. If you haven't followed us yet, please subscribe, comment, rate, uh, Mogul Moves Only. Um, but. I'm excited, man. I got a special treat. You know, a lot of times, you know, this is an entertainment podcast, but I like to give my, my audience a treat. Sometimes I just go deep, challenge you to think from a different perspective. Um, I got a bunch of brothers here right now. Um, y'all may see them all over in your neighborhoods and your streets uh, preaching the good news. You probably see them initially in purple and gold. You be like, oh, man, what the Q's out here doing? You know, brothers got full beards. Some be having bald heads. Some got the waves popping. But I guarantee you, these ain't Q's because you're going to tell by the bottoms of the shirts. I guess you what y'all call them. Fr- fringes. Fringes. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that's fashionable chic, right? fashionably chic right now. But I know they do that with a purpose. But I want to just introduce my guests. I got Cap in. Isaac. But, but go ahead, Cap. Say hi. Hey, um, shalom, brothers and sisters online. Um, my name is Captain Isaac. I'm a captain of Israel United in Christ here with the Dallas chapter. And um, all praises. That was a good introduction, by the way. I, hey, like I appreciate that. it. Yeah, you were flown. I like that. Um, we just here to, you know, reveal the truth of who we are according to the Bible and um, answer your questions. I appreciate it. And then down we have... Officer Lemuel, um, originally from Dallas, born and raised. Um, shalom to the brothers and sisters online that are listening via podcast um, and wherever else you're listening to, Spotify, iHeartRadio, so on and so forth. There you go. There you go, man. So I appreciate y'all coming on, man. I've been excited. Shout out to my guy, Gumbo. Um, I've been excited to have this because I've I had other pastors on here. Like uh, I had Pastor Vince Shar. He's um, an associate pastor at the Potter's House. But whenever I have people come on, I always try to approach everything from a neutral standpoint so that mm-hmm. people can actually get to hear you know what I'm saying? The truth as you see it. I'm not here to ever discredit or try to prove something wrong or entrap anybody into anything. Just like to have an open discussion. But before we get into the deepness of everything, mm-hmm. a lot of things been going on lately, right? Uh, I want to first start off, y'all. I know y'all been maybe keeping up with Jay-Z and Kaepernick. Yes. Um, for those who don't know, as we know, Kaepernick is famous for doing the kneeling during the, uh, the NFL um, national anthem during the NFL as a protest to shed light on social injustice and court as specifically African Americans or minorities with police officers. Uh, so he took a knee, and then recently uh, Jay Z partnered with the same NFL that was Kaepernick felt or a lot of people felt was blackballing Kaepernick for getting in the league. How do you guys feel about Jay Z or? Or Kaepernick stand, or just a, is it a divisive mechanism, or how y'all feel? Well, look, I'm, I'm going to open up with a scripture first. Let me no Zephaniah problem. 2, verse 1. Um, a lot of people have mixed feelings, mixed thoughts with what's going on with Jay-Z and Kaepernick. Um, myself, and I'm one of those people, um, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together. O nation not desired. That nation is not desired is talking about the Israelites. Who are the Israelites today? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right, of this of slave descent. We are the ones that's not desired. God is commanding us to gather together. Read. Before the decree bring forth, before the day passes the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before World War III, before Christ makes a second return and judges this whole planet Earth and everybody in it. Now, the Bible says to gather together. In order for us to stand up against oppression, we have to 
become unified. Okay. Under one train of thought as one people. So here you have the brothers in the league. Okay. Taking a knee. And although I'm I'll tell you straight out, that's nothing. That's laughable with the so-called white man. Um, the only reason they're they're upset at it is because the fans are making it a big deal. Right. Kneeling ain't gonna do nothing because you're still playing for that man right. who's been oppressing you because he's cutting your paycheck. We understand. Fact. They're put in a position where they're gonna kneel for oppression, but they're still gonna get on the field and run up and down for the so-called white man. It is what it is. Um, we've done the kneeling. We've done the marching. Now there's, there was a new thing a couple of years ago where brothers and sisters were laying down. They had that in New York, okay. in um, Macy's store. They were laying down on the store. That didn't work. People were stepping over them and just continued shopping. So Kaepernick decided to take a knee. He got blackballed. Okay, we understand that. Um, the rest of the teammates were taking a knee as well. And um, now this whole thing with Jay-Z. But what people are not speaking about is that the NFL, the same NFL who blackballed Kaepernick, they gave him hush money. Okay. They gave I'm him glad some money. That, yeah? They gave him some money. He took it. He took the money. Why? Because, of course, he needs it, right? Then um, I believe he signed some contract with Nike. They were doing something yeah. with him. And then they promoted him with that. So now um, Mr. Sean Carter comes along and he does a deal with the NFL and um, a lot of people got mixed emotions about that. They're calling him um, a sellout and sell sell out. Uncle Tom yeah. and so forth. But this is the same man that said, I'm going to show you how to move in a room full of um, vultures. So in order for him to, in order for us to enact power, we have to what? We got to unify and and put ourselves in that seat of power. So in his mind, he's probably like, look, we can only really make a difference from inside. Now, what I would do and what Jay-Z is doing is totally two different things. Okay. If these black people that we look up to as leaders and so forth, if they became unified, like the Jay-Z, the, um, uh, what's the name of that brother? Um, the brother that played Malcolm X. I forgot his name. Denzel Washington. Um, Oprah. Um, all these are Tyler Perry. If they were serious... They would gather together, put their money up, and create their own league. Why not create a Negro football league? They're going to pay for it. The white people are going to pay to see black people because we're the talented ones. Okay. We dominate the NFL. We right. dominate sports. It's truth, right? So these, none of these people are serious that we look up to. So Jay-Z, he's trying to get in a position where he can make a change, and our people are bashing him for it. And I could see, I could see why some people would call him Uncle Tom, but then I can see why people's like, nah, he has to do what he has to do in that situation. Um, if I was Jay-Z, maybe I would approach it um, a different way. But um, it's either neither here nor there. Our brothers, look, they got to repent. Jay got to come up out of that mind state that he got. He got to repent and look out for his people because we we can never we can never outdo our people. You you are as good as your race. Okay. Trust me. Those white people that he's in the room with, they still looking at him as a nigga. He even said it himself. Poor nigga, rich nigga, house nigga, feel house nigga, feel nigga, still it's nigga, still nigga. So um, that's my um opinion on that. To me, I feel like. Looking at both of them, I think the weakness is coming if we allow them allow us to divide J and Z from Kaepernick. If they, if if they allow us to put us together, put them pitting us against each other, where you have to pick G, Team Jay Z or Team Kaepernick, I think that's where we lose a lot of strength. If the the goal is to try to change the culture of the league, mm -hmm. being as predominant, the reason why I say that is Jay Z doesn't have to move exactly like Kaepernick to establish or obtain the same objective. Long as the objective is to be obtained. So like like Jay-Z said, like Kaepernick, I kind of look at it like a, a plant. We from a Bible stamp biblical mm -hmm. standpoint, we understand like sowing the seed. Or when we nurture a plant a plant. Some of us our job may be to plant the seed in the soil. Another one of our job may be come to back water. to water it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By the end of the day, you know, none of us can be the sun. You know what I'm saying? But I think with what Kaepernick did was he sold the seat. You know what I'm saying? Him and Eric Reed, they took the D, they brought eyes on whatever move that they was doing. But what happened was when the eyes fell on Kaepernick, the enemy came in and what they did was confuse what the original message was. The original message was social injustice. Exactly. 
but the, then the message got transferred to, oh, this is against the flag. This is against the national anthem. That has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. That's just a song, and that's just a, a piece of cloth. His problem was, I'm taking the knee. Probably one of the most humble gestures that you can do as a person to kneel yourself before anything. Yeah, and submissive. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they ch- they was able to change the message. So now, what most people think about Kaepernick, they don't think about pr- police brutality no more. You just see the fact that he's not on the NFL team. They changed the narrative. And then, like you said, you brought up a good point. Kaepernick signed a big check for an undisclosed amount, so he can't even say how much he got from exactly. the NFL. Exactly. He got taken care of, and then he got a lifetime deal with Nike. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then Jay-Z come in, and I like the word that Jay-Z used, actionable items. It's like, okay, Kaepernick deal, and he brought the attention. Now, my job is to, if I got a chance now to get it to inside the culture of the NFL and change the culture, because mm-hmm. I kind of like how the NBA do it. Like, this year, the NBA changed it. It's no owners. They don't use the word owners for teams no more. They got rid of that whole terminology. And that's just to appease us, to make us And, and that's true. But you don't see NBA players getting shut or shut down for standing out and talking about what they're favorable of. Like, mm-hmm. the NBA really gets behind it's players because they mm. understand this whole league is black. Same way mm. with the NFL, but see, the NFL is different from the NBA in a concept of NBA, they cut you from the team, you still get paid your money. NFL, you get cut from the team, your money stops now. You know what I'm saying? The majority, when I played, I played briefly. I was mm. with the Redskins and the Saints. Mm. If you on the team, it's 54 people, 52 people on the team, you probably only got five or six of them that's really millionaires. Everybody else is scraping to make it. We know that majority of us that's playing in the league come from impoverished situations. So you got you got a chance to make more money to get your family possibly out of the situation. So at the end of the day, we look at it like a lot of people be like, "Oh, Jay Z, he's an Uncle Tom." I don't feel like he's an Uncle Tom. I think that sometimes change do have to come from within, mm-hmm. while some of us need to work from the outside. And yeah. as long as we working together to achieve the same goal and the person on the inside is not forgetting the ones on the outside mm-hmm. and you, once you get on the inside, can get to the door, open it up so those on the outside can come in, mm-hmm. then I think it's fine. But if Jay-Z get in there and he try to become one of the good old boys and leave those out there, out there, then I think that's exactly. what the problem is so, going to be. Um, time will tell. <coughs> um, time will tell if he's a Uncle Tom or Coon or not. Facts. Um, reminds me of the movie The Spook That Sat By The Door. Ooh, I um, Piz, you said Piz, what Jay Z's doing is um is a strategic move. He's trying to get in and sit amongst other white people with power and try to bring his people in. Because there was a, a rumor, I don't know if it's true or not, that he was going to become a uh, an a owner order. of a team. But yeah. I'm now I'm hearing that it's not true. But if it is true, that's a possibility where he can go in and tell Kaepernick, "Hey, I want you to be the starting quarterback." You know, yeah. so that would be what we call a, a strategic move. And, and it, it has to be because, you know what, most people don't know this, but in order to be an owner in the NFL, all the owners got to agree for you to be an owner. Mm. That's why you can't just become an owner. And that's for the NFL. That's for the NFL. Now, if you notice, look at or look at um throughout sports, right? You have usually the top three, which people talk about mainly is the NBA, NFL, and um, MLB, right? right? How many black owners out of those three do we have? Two maybe, Michael Jordan, and um, from what I'm hearing, um, Magic Johnson has a he's a Baseball, part owner of the, the Dodgers. Dodgers, but there's no black NFL, no black owners, no. no black owners, and now I think that's something we don't realize how much power we have. We are the world's largest what consumers, consumers. not producers. Um, we bear the burden of this whole planet on our backs. And I'm speaking about, when I say we, I'm talking about blacks and Hispanics. And I know there's a divide between us two. Blacks, Hispanics, and natives who are the Israelites. We can force people's hands. Sometimes, not with everything. Yeah. But I, I feel like if these people were serious, who we call leaders, they should get together, put their money where their mouth is, and create their own league. But they can't because they feel like they have to keep going to master for crumbs. Why not start your own Negro Basketball Association? At one point, we had that. We had that. That's why assimilation and integration destroyed our people. Our mind is like mush right now. Why not start our own Negro Football League? We can't because we think if we leave master, we won't be able to do it on our own. That's the self-identity that's been destroyed and self-esteem that's been destroyed ever since slavery. Get me Deuteronomy 28. I want to show you something real quick. Deuteronomy 28 verse 47. Because everything that I'm saying is, is biblical. 
But we have to what? We have to be born again and we got to refresh our minds to realize how great of a people we are. And that's what we teach at um, IUIC. Okay. Israelites, all across the board, we teach our people that they are the greatest thing that God ever created. And our people really, they really lack that thought. Deuteronomy yeah. chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So this is Moses who was speaking to the Israelites after we left Egypt. He was telling you, because you don't want to serve God for the abundance of all things, you're going to serve your enemies. Those same enemies are the ones that put shackles and chains on our necks and brought us on ships. God says, you don't want to keep my holidays. You don't want to keep my commandments. You want to follow Christmas. You want to do Thanksgiving. You want to do everything that the white man says. Who's your oppressor? You don't want to do what I'm, I'm telling you to do. You're going to have to serve your enemy in the want of all things. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Mm -hmm. In hunger. You want food? You got to go to your enemies. Come on. And in thirst. In thirst. The bottles of waters that we're drinking. We don't produce those. And guess what? Waters are what? The water's supposed to be a free commodity, right? Mm -hmm. supposed to be free. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The clothes on your back. It, is, it doesn't say pro, um, produced by... Your name is Derek? Yeah. It doesn't say produced by Derek. All right? It's made in China, made in Taiwan, made in France somewhere. Read. And in want of all things. So whatever you need, whatever you need, Derek, we got to go to our enemies. So that's been embedded in us ever since slavery. So that's why it's hard for these brothers and sisters to come together and do their own. We dominate. We dominate sports. I mean, our wish, our wish is for our people to come out of sports, really, to tell you the truth. However, we understand a lot of brothers and sisters are put in certain situation where their talents has their their um, talents and physical skills have brought them to a certain level to where they can receive some kind of financial gain. And that's how they make a living. We understand that. However, get together and create your own. We have the power in our hand, but our self-esteem is so shot. We won't do it. So. But getting deep into it, like, you, and you brought up some things, and I definitely want to get into to it real quick about being Israelite. So mm. a lot of people see you guys ministering in the street, preaching the truth. And I, I guess my question is, is truth subjective or is it definitive? Truth is, get me truth, Psalms. Um, truth is definite. There's only one truth. Outside of the truth, you have subjective, which is opinions. Right. So uh, truth according to the Bible is definite. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Mm -hmm. See, the laws of God is the truth, and the laws of God are perfect. The laws of God was given to the Israelites so we can what? Govern ourselves. Now, a lot of times, like I'm reading out the Bible now, and I'm pretty sure a lot of your listeners might be like, ah, come on, didn't the white man write that? Didn't the white man use that book to enslave us? How could that be truth? Uh. But let me show you something what the white man did. Because remember, during the time of slavery, we couldn't read or write. Right. Remember that. So they dictated how they wanted us to learn the Bible. And many of our brothers and sisters are still caught up in white man religion now. All of these religions were created by the so-called white man. And it's truth. Get me Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. I'm going to read you something. You're going to tell, you tell me, Derek, if this is truth or if it's false. Okay. If this is definite or subjective. Start at um, verse um, 15 and then give me 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee, and overtake thee. So we're going to read a few curses, and you're going to tell me if it's definite or if it's subjective. Okay. Mind you, Derek, this was thousands of years ago. This okay. was when we came up out of Egypt. Okay. The Most High God destroyed Egypt and delivered the Israelites out with Moses. Okay, read verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So your sons, the Israelites, your sons and your daughters are going to be given unto another people, meaning another race of people. Mm -hmm. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Mm -hmm. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So we didn't have any might to recover our kids. No economic might, no military might. Who did this happen to? 
When were when were our sons and daughters taken and given to another people? So my my literal answer mm-hmm. would be when they be just talking about those in Egypt that at that time when well we came up out of Egypt. Remember, this was a future prophecy. Mm-hmm. We came out of Egypt. The commandments was given to us. Right? You see, you ever seen mm-hmm. the movie The Ten yeah. Commandments? The commandments was given to us. Moses told the Israelites. I'm going to give you the commandments. God says, you follow my commandments, you're going to be a blessed people. If you disobey my commandments, you're going to be a cursed people. That's one of the curses. Okay. Okay? Having your sons and daughters given unto another people. When did that happen to us? I mean, that, that did happen here in the, in the United States. What, I mean, During what time? Very good. Transatlantic slavery. slavery and also what they call the sub-Saharan. Which so was, was that the them. only time, I guess, Israelites was enslaved from... So, Egypt, no, when it came more. out of Egypt, and then to now, that was the only time. That we, oh, no. We went into, we was always in slavery. So, I, we're I, disobedient I, people. So I guess my thing is that how we don't know, it was maybe been talking about one of the other enslaved moments versus maybe trying to get this to stretch to fit. Mm. Well, I'm going to show God. you. The curses are repetitive. But as you read on in this chapter, it clears it up. But the curses are repetitive. We were enslaved in Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, um, Persian and Medes, um, Greece, Rome, and now America. And the Arabs had us enslaved too in what's called the sub-Saharan slave trade. Okay? Get me the next verse, verse 33. Verse Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Mm-hmm. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. That's colonization. That happened to us in the west coast of Africa. It happened to us here amongst the natives, the Hispanics, who were here before the so-called white man got here. And it's still happening to us over there on the continent now. Jump to verse... Um, you want to read on on this? You got more? Yeah, yes, read sir. on. Read on. And thou shalt be only oppressed... And crushed always. You shall only be oppressed and crushed always. That's why you got these Michael Brown situations, Trayvon Martin situations. It's an ongoing thing. This thing is not going to stop until we come back as the Israelites and repent. We, our people, blacks and Hispanics, we are are what you call a glutton for punishment. Mm. We get punished. We wonder why the hell are all these things happening to us as a nation of people but then we want to march, we want to do this, we want to do that. But we don't want to repent. All we got to do is repent and come back to the Bible. So then one will say then, I, I guess let me see how we word this. So when we say truth is definite. Mm-hmm. But hold on, I okay. got some more okay. for you. I got okay. some more proof. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Verse 48. I'm verse 48. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm-hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger uh-huh. and in thirst and in nakedness. Come on. And in want of all things. So the most high God is saying that he's gonna send your enemies against you and you gotta serve them in the want of all things. Now, just in case some of you are confused that are listening, the most high is gonna get specific. Come on. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. You skipped the whole verse. Oh, I'm sorry. And he shall put a yoke of iron. The he, the same person you got to serve for food, for water, and for nakedness, he's going to put a what? A yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Who put a yoke of iron upon our necks until they have destroyed us? The Caucasians. We just got to say it. I know we don't like to say the white man. We get scared like he's listening in. (laughs) The white man did that. Jump to verse 68. Verse 16. And it says, until you have destroyed thee. So those yokes of iron came off of our necks during what they call the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay. Okay? So it's almost like you have a, a well-trained dog. You put the leash on him for a dispensation of time. When that dog is fully trained and you tell it when to sit, when to bark, when to eat, when to do that, when to do this, you take off the leash. That dog doesn't go anywhere because you fully broke that dog. That's the same thing that happened to our forefathers. Mm. We've been fully broken in America. Verse 68. Verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now the word Egypt there, give me Exodus 20 verse 2 because I know this is probably your first time hearing this. The word Egypt is synonymous with slavery, bondage. We never went back into Egypt again for the second time as a nation of people. The first time we went into Egypt, we walked into Egypt. Mm. God is saying, I'm going to send you into this second Egypt again with ships. How did we come over here? On ships. How did we get to Jamaica? St. Thomas, Haiti, on ships. 
Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So God compares Egypt to bondage. Go back to 2868. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships mm -hmm. by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Moses said we were going to be sold to our enemies for the want of all things. We're going to have yokes on our necks. That happened. Prophecy fulfilled. Definite. This is definite truth. So how do we know that that prophecy wasn't fulfilled? Any, is it a recurring or reoccurring prophecy so that every time you go into bondage, this is this prophecy being fulfilled over and over again? Because I know that we already discussed that. Mm -hmm. that what, after Egypt, that wasn't the only time Israelites went into captivity. Mm -hmm. It happened a couple of other times along the way. Yes. So how do we not know that any of those other times were the times that were fulfilled? The prophecy. Read verse 68 again for him. And the Lord shall bring thee into mm -hmm. Egypt again mm -hmm. with ships mm -hmm. by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your heritage or your homeland again. All those other times that we went into captivity like Babylon, Persian Medes, Greece, and Rome, there was an end to it. And a majority of time, the Israelites returned back to Jerusalem. During the time of Christ, when Christ was walking on the earth, you had the Romans that were ruling over Jerusalem. The Jews knew who they were at that time. But over here, it's telling you you're not going to see your heritage again. The Negroes here in America, they don't know that they're the Jews. Now they're learning it because you got different Israelite camps on the street that are teaching, yeah. bringing it back to their remembrance. But when we got off those cargo slave ships and we were fully indoctrinated, we were calling ourselves black, colored people, niggas, Negro, and so forth. Mm. No, we didn't know that we were the Jews. All of that was taken away from us. So now going from, uh, I guess, for those who, let's say we have those out there, our listeners, that mm -hmm. are more on the, although you're giving us a, uh, a, a lesson right down from, mm -hmm. from the Bible. And we know that to for some people that may not look at that as truth, they want a more of a, a hardcore scientific more type of evidence, right? A hardcore more I mean uh, how more to, how more scientific can I, we get than ships and so yokes of iron? What, what I mean by that is mm -hmm. okay, the concept of black and white, right? Mm -hmm. I had a friend that was from Africa, I think maybe Ghana somewhere there. He said, I didn't know I was black until I came to America. Because in Ghana, everybody is black. So the concept of black and white as we see it mm -hmm. only exists here. Absolutely. Um, so some people may say that history or uh, have shown that majority of slaves that were brought to the United States, most of them came from West Africa. Yeah, majority. Oh, majority. Um, mm -hmm. So with that being said, simply say that we're just because we're black makes you an Israelite. How well, does that fit for somebody that actually may have mm -hmm. a Nigerian or a Ghanaian or a, a Cambodian descent that it can prove that lady, I mean, that bloodline back there? Well, we have, I want Zephaniah 2 verse 8 first. Um, we were scattered abroad everywhere, not only on this side of the world. We have Israelites over there on the West Coast. We actually have a congregation in Ghana, Nigeria and so forth and other parts of Africa. We have Israelites over there. Being an Israelite has nothing to do with color, although a majority do have color. I'm going to explain what I mean. Okay. First, let me get Zephaniah 2, verse 8. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. No. Ver uh, uh, chapter 3, yeah. verse 10. Go ahead. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Where's Ethiopia today? E East Africa. East Africa. Come on. My suppliance, mm -hmm. even the daughter of my dispersed. Even the daughter of my dispersed. The word dispersed means scatter. To disperse mm -hmm. something means you scatter it. When were we scattered? During the time of slavery. Okay. Whether it be sub-Saharan or transatlantic. The Most High God did not only send us to this side of the world, which is considered the Western Hemisphere, we were sent to the East too. Israelites were sent on slavery to London. A majority of the Israelites that didn't come over here via um, chattel slavery stayed in Africa and mingled amongst the other tribes, which were later colonized by the so-called white man. We read that in Deuteronomy 28.33. Read. Shall bring mine offering. Uh-huh. Verse 11. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, uh -huh. wherein thou hast transgressed against me. Come on. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Uh -huh. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Come on. 
and uh, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. That's the poor. That's the part that I wanted to get to. Come on. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. That's the remnant who are being called by Gentile names. Mm-hmm. Black is a Gentile name. Mm-hmm. Nigeria is a Gentile name. African American is a Gentile name. We don't read those names in the Bible. Those names was given to us by who? By our oppressors. So now you said um, the thing about color. Mm-hmm. It's not a color thing. It's an Israelite thing. It's just that the majority of Israelites are people of color. Mm. You mentioned people from the West Coast of Africa, Nigeria and Ghana. Those people happen to be so-called black people. The reason I say so-called because God never called us black. God Mm. called us Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Israel. God never called this brother right here Mexican, my brother Mario, or native Indian. You can't find those words in the Bible. Those were names that was given to him by his colonizer. He called, God called his people the tribe of Issachar from the nation of Israel. Now the seed comes from the dad. I'll give you a perfect illustration. Um, are you aware of, a, or have you ever heard of a mayor in New York called Bill de Blasio? Mm-hmm. He's of Italian descent, mm-hmm. what we call Romans, right? right? Italians. He's a white Caucasian man. He has a black wife what we call black, right? Mm. They have a child. That child has pigmentation. Mm. But according to the Bible, that child is not an Israelite. Mm. That child is of another nation. That child is what his father is, a white man, a a chocolate-covered white man. Mm. That's what the Bible says, Numbers 1, verse 18. I'm going to show you that the nationality comes from the man. Come on. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Mm. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So the pedigrees is after the house of the fathers. That's the one you read the Bible, Derek. It always says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. It always quotes those three patriarchs, not matriarchs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's not about color. It's about the seed of Israel. So I guess my thing, and not to jump topics, Mm -hmm. can we? I want to get on the discussion of God who who we believe God is uh, to be. And what, first, I guess my thing is, who are who is God mm-hmm. and mankind as a whole? What are we to him? Mankind as, as a, a whole. whole. All right. It's a good question. Get me that in Exodus, man of war. First and foremost, God is a man of war. The omnipotent, om, omniscient, and omnipresent mm-hmm. being who made this whole planet Earth, who created this whole planet Earth. We're going to read an attribute about God. Come on. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. If I can get it. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. So the Bible says the Lord is a man of war. That's why he destroyed Egypt in the first place for our sakes. Notice that. Destroyed another nation of people. Mm -hmm. Right? Not the whole nation, of course, but a majority of them, those who were in rulership, Pharaoh and his people and so forth, to bring out the Israelites. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we're the chosen seed. We're the chosen nation. Get me Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. So, because uh, you mentioned something about mankind. Yes, God created everybody. God created everybody. He created this whole world and everything in it. However, he created the earth for you. And I know that might be a little too far-fetched because we're some Negroes. We're always at the bo- bottom. Always being oppressed. But why are we being oppressed? Because we keep Breaking the commandments of God. But the Bible tells you exactly who he's the God of and why. Go ahead. Exodus, uh, excuse me, 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. Mm -hmm. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So Adam was the Lord of everybody. Adam was the first created. Adam was supposed to be a God on earth until what? His wife sinned and then his lifespan was cut short. But Adam named all the creatures, all the animals that you have today, Adam named all those animals okay that's why he was a god on earth come on of him come we all all nations come from adam come on and the people also whom thou hast chosen now we're talking about a god who's particular that's why they call him what a jealous god the most high god has feelings that's why he destroyed egypt that's why they call him a jealous god if you go start worshiping buddha and rocks and trees and pigeons God is going to get jealous. That's why in his commandment, Derek, it says, thou shalt not have no other God before me, right? Read. 
verse 55. Come on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, uh -huh. because thou madest the world for our sakes. Blacks, Hispanics, and natives, the world was made for you, for the Israelites. Come on. As for the other people. As for the other nations. Which also come of Adam. Come on. Thou hast said that they are nothing. Come on. But be like unto spittle. Like, you see that cup of water you got right there? If a little bit of drop, a, drop a little bit on your beard. You ain't going to care about that little bit you drop. Ezra is praying to the Most High God and saying, God, you said this. You said that they are nothing unto you. They be like unto spittle. Read. And has likened the abundance of them mm -hmm. unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Come on. And now, O Lord, behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us. You hear this? Mm. So Ezra is saying, these same people, these other people that you created, they, be, they became lords over us. They're ruling over us, just like now. In Babylon the Great, also known as America, the white man is the dominant power on the earth. He's ruling over us. That's why when you get these little mass shooters, they'll never say white supremacist shooters. They say, oh, he was mentally deranged. Okay, and all these little manifestos, or oh, I'm going to Walmart in uh, El Paso to kill Mexicans and Hispanics. Oh, he was mentally deranged. Oh, it was too much call of duty. They're the ones ruling so they can control the narrative. Ezra's is saying these people who always had a reputation of being nothing, they're ruling over us. Why? Because we keep sinning. So uh, I, I want to bring it back to God, like you said, God is... Omnipresence, mm -hmm. mean, present. He mm -hmm. means he's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, omnipotent, meaning he's what? He's all knowing, mm -hmm. right? And then what is it? Uh, what's the last one? All powerful. Uh, yeah, all powerful, omni, omni, omnipotent, um, omnipresent everywhere, and yeah, all, all knowing, knowing is um is omniscient. So, with that being said, for those who ask that question, that God know everything before it happens, mm -hmm. and being that He know that He's going to create this world. And he knows that all these things are going to happen mm -hmm. once he create this world. What are we to him? Are we like a like the reason why I'm asking that? Like to God, are we like a Sims? Y'all know the game The Sims. You ever see that computer game The Sims where yes. you create these worlds and mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying you watch the people interact. What are we to him? Are we truly? Something that God loves? Are we something that's just his past time where he's know all this debacle, all this mm -hmm. stuff is going to happen? That's a good question because I seen that the other day um, on YouTube. Mm. A famous brother out of Harlem, New York, his name is uh, Sonetta, and he had this the, the topic was God on trial. If God knows all of this, why does he allow it to happen? Let me read something for you. Get me uh, first Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. Because remember, in the beginning, we read in Deuteronomy 28, we had a choice. God, like you said, God is all-knowing, right? He knew that we was going to break the commandments. He knew that we was going to break the commandments. So it's almost, like, it's almost like an author that's writing a book, and he knows what he's going to put in the book. He knows what the characters are going to be. And all praises to the Most High, we're on the good side. We're the good characters. We just got to repent and keep the commandments. But my whole thing is, mm -hmm. is it truly a choice? Yes, if it is a choice. If you was already predestined and written in this as an author, already mm -hmm. written out what your storyline was going to be from the beginning, your struggle and your disobedience, your your obedience and your blessings, if it's already pre-written before the time, do you truly have a choice? Because it's already written for you. Well, it's, pre, it's, it's predestined as far as um, the nation of Israel is going to get the kingdom of heaven. But the, the choice is ours whether we want to repent or not. But don't he know? Yeah, he knows. If you're going to repent or not. Of course. So, of course he does. Again, back to a choice. Mm -hmm. Do we truly have a choice if it's already written and he already knows beforehand? Yes, we do have a choice. But at the same time, like you said, is written beforehand with God being who he is. Now, that would be above my pay grade because then I would have to tell you what God thoughts are. I can't do that. All I could do is read the scriptures and pray that you repent and you are the elect of God. Now, what you said is heavy because not everybody's going to get the kingdom of heaven. It's written that two-thirds are going to perish here when the nuclear missiles hit America. Mm -hmm. And one-third is going to be brought forth through the fire and inherit the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the elect of God, who are the 144,000, that's the ruling government body of God. That, that's why the scripture says you have to walk your walk. You got to examine yourself. 
So I wouldn't be able I wouldn't be able to tell you like that question you asked is a heavy question. That's a that's a very good question, but I wouldn't be able to tell you God's thoughts. So do you know mm-hmm. how many brothers are is it in the day in, in like right now in like Israelite, like if y'all was to calculate in the country right now, uh, uh, that's a great question. Um, I never, I never uh, thought about um, the quantity. I always, you know, think about the um, the quality. But we do have a good a good amount of brothers scattered throughout abroad that are waking up. Mm-hmm. We do have a good. But I wouldn't be able to put a number on it. Okay, and I, I would just ask you that, <clears throat> like being like one hundred and forty four thousand. That's mm-hmm. a very minuscule. Number. Oh yeah, that's a very. That's small a small number. amount. And we, we got eight billion people. On this yes. planet. Yes. And that's and, a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. So with the 144,000, like right now, are you, how do you know or how does anybody know that they're confident that they're included in that number? Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. The Bible says to make sure you make your election sure. Um, and it also said, get me um, that in um, Revelation 2.26. Let me show you something. Let me show you the promise that Christ had unto us. Uh, you could never say that. I could never say I made it because I didn't. I'm still sitting here in the, in the flesh. Uh-huh. All right. I'm still in this mortal body. I still have carnal thoughts. Uh-huh. I have to make sure I walk diligently according to the commandments of God until the end. Read. Revelation chapter 2 verse 26. Mm-hmm. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nation. You hear that? So we got to keep the commandments until the end. Either your heart stop beating or Christ cracks the sky and makes a second return. Okay. We got to keep the commandments. We can never say, oh, I made it. I'm good. Um, I'm going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That is the wrong thought. You got to endure until the end. You got to keep fighting until the end. Now, you said something earlier about God that I wanted to show you. Okay. Get me that in um, Sirach. You have it? Which one? Uh, two. Made two, two against two. Oh, Sirach chapters. If you don't have it, look for it. Just give me Deuteronomy seven verse six. If somebody knows it in the audience, just pull it. Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. Because you said something about if we're if we're great and so forth. Why do, I don't want to misquote you, but you said something along the lines of if we're great, then why does he? have these things happen or something like that. I just want to clarify that. When you say we're great, it's not talking about the whole planet Earth. God is only dealing with one people, and that's the Israelites. God is the God of Israel only. Mm-hmm. I hope you understand that. Though. I mean, I get that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just saying, like, if we're putting God on a trial, mm-hmm. and he's the creator of all things, and you, I, I guess a couple of things, like you said, like God of war. If you're God, who could go to war with God? And why create anything that can mm. potentially even stand against you? Well, like, like who? Like who? Who to, can stand to, against God? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So if you are God of war, yeah. that means you're going against going to war well, against something else on the behalf. But it's still yeah. something that you created yourself. That Absolutely. You knew was going but it's, to do this. But it's fun. Think about it. So then that, now when you said it's yeah, fun, it's that's fun. where it go back to me. What mm. are we to God? Are we We're his servants. We're his servants. It's it fun for him, but it's kind of like our expense of our emotion. Well, that's the thing. The Bible says he's going to use us to break apart the nations. We just read in Revelation 2.26 that if you overcome, he's going to give you power over the nation. The Most High God is going to use Israel as his vessels on earth to carry out his will. Because when you said this, this is Rebobia, this is a mm-hmm. good analogy. Gobo could mm-hmm. attest to this big time. You want to piss Gobo off. Let him be at home and you sign in to his profile here at the studio. And the reason why I bring that up on Xbox is I kind of feel like if God, if use it just the word fun, mm-hmm. if this is fun to God, I feel like, damn, I forgot where I was going with that. I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, like, like a lot of people say God loves his children, but to me, it started to feel more so like, I don't necessarily know if it's love. It is love. I feel like it's. it feels more like a assimilation. It feels like either we are experiment or we some form of entertainment that he likes to, let me see what was going on the earth and he log in. Uh, the Israelites messed up again. Fire, brimstone on them. But, okay, I'm going back and get some less. Okay, I'm gonna, back. Oh, they doing better now. Let me clear that up for you. Fresh matter. God made this whole earth and he uh-huh. chose us as his nation to serve him. 
he gave us an option. Yes, he knows the beginning, the midst, and the end. Mm -hmm. He gave us the option of keeping the commandments. We broke it. Now we're saying, okay, well, did he make us to? No, he he made us to serve him. So any punishment that we receive from the heavenly Father, it's like so be it. We deserved it. Now as far as uh, the comments you made about um, because you said a whole lot, but I'm trying to remember. What, I'm trying to pin what you said. Um, I get lost about, in the sauce sometimes. About too, so the, cool. uh, the video game thing or or logging in, the Most High is using the Israelites to subdue all the other nations. That's his agenda. So his will will be fulfilled on earth. Let me show you something. Jeremiah 51. Then get that. Hold that. Give me Jeremiah 51. You know what I want? Yes, the battle axe. Give me that. Jeremiah 51 and 20. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. Mm -hmm. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. So God is going to use us. When that time comes, that's what he's going to use us for. To subdue the whole planet earth and to enforce his will. Because God's will is not being done on earth. That's why two men can get married and two women can get married. Mm. You can, in, a, in the United Kingdom, you can marry your animal. That's why there's black-on-black -black murder, adulteries on a rise, and so forth. All manners of unclean foods and God's high holy days are not being celebrated on earth. Instead, we're celebrating what the white man put in place. Get me what you were holding in um, Ecclesiasticus. We got to start at verse 10. Come on. Uh, Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. Mm -hmm. In much knowledge, the Lord hath divided them and made their ways diverse. Come on. So the Most High divided us and made our ways diverse. We are all, like, you want to say pawns on a chessboard? Or you want to say characters in a book? That's exactly what we are, yes. Read, come on. Some of them uh -huh. hath he blessed and uh, hath he blessed and exalted. The people that he blessed and exalted is you, Derek, and your mm -hmm. forefathers. Why? Because the care of the Bible was given unto you. The testimonies of God was given unto you. God's laws was given unto you to govern yourself and your nation. Read. And some of them hath he sanctified and set near himself. Come on. But some of them hath he cursed and brought low. So he cursed people and brought them low. And he brought us low when we broke his commandments. Come on. And turned out of their places. Uh-huh. As the clay is in the potter's hand. As the clay is in the potter's hand. Who's the potter's hand? God. God. Come on. To fashion it at his pleasure. Mm -hmm. So man is in the hand of him that made him. If you had a table of clay right here and you decided to take the red piece and and fashion it any way you want and take the blue piece and fashion it anywhere. who could come and tell you why you did that Derek why did you make a ball out of this one and why did you make a spike out of this one you're the owner of that clay mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the most high God but I still kind of look at it like mm -hmm. trying to I guess that this is where it's get hard to understand the vastness of God or the reasoning of God is that you brought up the, the concept of a chess game mm -hmm. but this chess game is rigged Yes, and, and you're you're on you're on the winning side. So all praises so, to the most side. Yeah, but my whole thing is like, God said I'm a jealous guy, and mm -hmm. I get bad. So I'm get bad at my. Let's say I'm gonna just put my role self in the role of God. I'm God. I'm gonna write out this script mm -hmm. and this storyline, and I'm gonna create all these things. And I'm gonna say I'm a jealous guy, and I'm gonna get at bad at the things that I'm gonna create that you're gonna do. Yes. If it's, the, put, but, it's put there in front of us to see what we're going to choose. Here's but, the idol. Here's the is idol. it for him to try to figure out what we're going to do? No, thing he, is, knows he already, already knows. So it's for you to figure out what you're going to do. The idol of Buddha is right here. So is Derek going to go after? Wait, no, let's not use Buddha. Let's use the glorious and honorable mm. white man Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right? White man Jesus is right here. Is Derek going to follow white man Jesus or is he going to follow the path of the Bible? So the, you do you do have a choice. But, That's why the Bible says to make. But white man short. Jesus was put here. Yes, and I wrote because I'm God that you're yes. going to follow white man Jesus. Yes. So that means I truly the mm -hmm. the person that I wrote out to follow white man Jesus had no choice. Because no, I not not uh uh. Because get me that on the comforter. Get me the comfort. Wait, wait. Let's finish this and then I'm gonna get okay. get the comforter part. I don't want to lose the point. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 33, 13. As uh -huh. the clay is in the potter's hand mm -hmm. to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liketh him best. Mm 
See, to render to him what liking him best. Come on. Good is set against evil. So good is set against evil, right. Derek. Come on. And life against death. Uh huh. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. Come on. So look upon all the works of the Most High. All the works of the Most High, whether it be the animal kingdom, human life, whatever. Come on. So, uh, so look upon all the works of the Most High, mm -hmm. and there are two and two, one against another. So there's always two and two, one against another. Now get me um, where I was going to go. I was going to go somewhere else because he said something about, um, about the Most High known by Cesar Borgia. Remember, for, a, for a, a period of time, white man Jesus was taught to us. Okay. Get me the comforter. But now the Spirit of God is back on the earth to let us know, look. Christ is not a so-called white man. In the Bible, he's described as black. Mm -hmm. So now you have an option. Are you going to remove yourself from modern Christianity and these wicked churches and come back to the Bible? Or are you just going to stay in the tradition of men because you're comfortable and because your family's comfortable with it? So now you have the choice. Mm -hmm. You have the choice. But God already knows what Derek is going to do. But Derek doesn't know what Derek is going to do. But... Again, I mm. and I don't want to spin my wheel. And I don't mm. want to go back to it. Then what mm. do we truly have a choice? Because one would say, just from the outside in, and I'm just want to bring a perspective. So it get more dialogue for you all to talk and reach mm. on it. So because people had these questions. Again, if God knew everything before He did it, mm. do I truly have a choice? Because what it's saying is my script is already written. You you do have a choice. So if I choose this way and I go this way, I truly had no choice because God already ordained for me this go this way. Isaiah fifty five and eight. That's heavy. I like I like the way you're putting that. But like I said, certain things are above my pay grade because I, I can't I know, think I the you. way the most I think. Isaiah chapter fifty five verse eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm -hmm. neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I can't. There's certain answers. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be like I the, the pork that. chop eating pastor that comes over here and lies on your on your podcast. No, real talk. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna give you real talk. I, that I can't answer because I don't. I don't know the mind state of God. I only know what the Bible says, okay. and the Bible says that unless you repent and be converted as as little children, you're not gonna see the kingdom of heaven. If you walk outside these doors, Derek, mm -hmm. and Somebody comes up to you and offers you crack. Right. Are you going to buy it? Or are you going to take it to smoke at home? No. So there you have a choice. And God knows what you are going to choose. But, some but it's up say, to yeah, you. Smoke crack. It's up, exactly. Some people will say yes. And some <laughs> people will say no and then go ahead and smoke the crack. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. So that we're always put in different situations for God to prove us. Are you going to serve him or are you going to serve yourself? Meaning your own feelings and emotions. I'll give you another example. If you walk out of here, because you said no real fast with the crack, right. but I'm going to hit you with another one. Let's say you walked outside of these doors. You like light-skinned women or dark-skinned women? I just like women. Woman, period. Good. Very good. Very good. So you walk outside these doors, and you see a sister that looks, hey, she, she looked like Beyonce or something. Uh -huh. Or like one of these beautiful sisters that are sitting in here. Uh -huh. She comes up to you half-naked, revealing clothes. I mean, whatever you consider to be fine as hell. And she says, hey, well, I'm going to this bar. Why don't you come with me? And then after that, we can swing by my place. And she's married. What are you going to do? I'm going to think about it. Ah, you're going to think about <laughs> it. Well, at least you're honest. Some brothers would be but like, nah, damn, you know what? Nah, I, I mean, I, I guess my, my, my... You have a choice. That's I what I'm choice. showing you. Absolutely. You have a choice. I ain't as thirsty as most guys. Yeah, that's good. That's but a good I thing. I sit there and be like, ah, and that's Well, guess what? That's that obstacle that was put in your way. Okay, if I go with this woman and she's married, even if you're single, that's, that's called what? That's committing adultery. Right. In the biblical times, you were put to death for that. Right. But now you could repent under Christ and do it no more. Right. So you have an option. Things are always laid in front of us and we got to see, okay, am I going to follow God or am I going to follow my own lust. Right. Those are options. Read what you are holding. John chapter 14, verse 15. Uh -huh. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, uh -huh. that he may abide with you forever. And that's the, that's the spirit of the Bible coming back, telling us who we are in these last days, the description of Christ, the description of the Israelites, and what we got to do to get out of these conditions that we're in. So when we, and, and I want to speak up on this, and I definitely want to make sure we have like a couple of more of these because mm -hmm. I, I think we could go on for a long of course, yes. time. But yeah. I just love to have you guys all like as regular guests so we could just kind of continue to build upon this narrative. We would love that. I, I want to touch on the Bible 
mm. a little bit because, you know, that's like the staple of for those who believe, that's what you lead on, that's your foundation, that's mm. your source. For those who don't believe, they try to use that source and its credibility mm-hmm. against those who believe in it. And I want to kind of tie that back to why I was saying in the earlier, is, is true subjective or is it definitive? Because when we read the Bible, we weren't there where any of this stuff transpired, where any of these were written. Yes, sir. So when it comes to the term faith, mm-hmm. is faith, what, what, what was the, how did the Bible define the faith as the Let's get it. evidence of things? things? Yep. So you've been reading. Sound like you've been you've been doing a little reading. You no, know, I know a little bit. You know, a little something, you know something. I mean? All right, you know, just a little stuff. All right, that's good. That's good. That's a start. Read Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one. Mm-hmm. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm-hmm. the evidence of things not seen. Mm-hmm. For by it the elders obtained the good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, mm-hmm. so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So faith is everything. That's why the Bible says faith without works is dead. Fact. So this is a, um, a faith-based walk. But as time passes, as time goes on, the things are becoming evident to us. Mm-hmm. For example, what we read in Deuteronomy 28, 68, that fits no other people on this planet Earth but the so-called Negro and Hispanic man today as far as coming o- over here on cargo slave ships, having yokes of iron on our necks. Mm-hmm. Um, go, go back to that because you didn't finish that. Deuteronomy 28, 68, being sold unto your enemies, bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem you. That's written in the Bible. All of those things are coming to pass now. Read it in its entirety, fam. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm-hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm-hmm. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Mm-hmm. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Come on. For bond men uh-huh. and bond women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you. That's what the word buy means. Malcolm X tried, Martin Luther King tried, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, um, um, Nat Turner. We had a whole bunch of people try to rise up and redeem our people from these curses. And guess what? They failed. A majority of them got what? Assassinated or outcasts like uh, Marcus Garvey and so forth. Mm -hmm. The only person that could redeem us from these curses is Christ. A black man, by the way. So would it it come back to the the premise of faith? Mm -hmm. Can we say that when it comes to faith, we all are detectives? What we're doing is we're looking at the evidence that's presented before us, the Bible. We're looking at this transcript, Mm -hmm. and we're reading it to see, does this evidence present... Present itself? Present itself as yeah. what we believe is the truth. Because faith is really belief. We don't know for sure because we weren't there. Absolutely. We don't see any of these things. Yeah. And so when we read the Bible, are we pulling together evidence like a detective to figure out what transpired here? Is this truth? Yes. Yes. And we're, we're that evidence, so-called Negroes in America. We are that evidence. And so um, I guess my, my and we could close with this. And I'll mm-hmm. let you close with the final statements. Being that... You're saying that we are that evidence, mm-hmm. being that you, I guess, make a case for that. How are we are that evidence? If you weren't there, mm-hmm. we we know that any document that's ever written is written with some type of meaning, propaganda, or some type of message that mm-hmm. is trying to propose. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm trying to see how I could tie this all in. And mm-hmm. then we also know that people could take the Bible, because we've seen it one, uh, many a time, and weaponize it to fit. Mm-hmm their belief systems, their propaganda. Yes. And none of us was there. Being that truth is definite, Mm -hmm. faith is belief, Mm -hmm. can you tie this in? How can we take something that is Mm faith-based and declare it as truth if we are out there and when we know that people have misinterpreted the Bible over and over again? So I'll show you how. Um, I just said how we are that living evidence. Um, The Bible says that we will be sold unto our enemies, um, would have yokes of iron on our necks, mm-hmm. we'll go into slavery on ships. Process of elimination, who did that happen to? The so-called Negroes and Hispanics. The Bible said we will become proverbs and bywords. Our surnames would be changed. We'll take on the names of our slave masters. We read about that in Isaiah 65 verse 15. It was written, it happened. 
The Bible said how another man will come and put himself up as as Christ and we would be deceived. Mm. And there'll be the, co- the covering of faces and the changing of the image of God, changing of the image of his son, the disciples, the angels. Who did that? The so-called white man when he came and whitewashed all the images. And remember, in slavery, we could not read or write. Right. So everything that was given to us, even our last names for some, um, was that of the so-called white man. All his religions was given to us from Catholicism all the way down to Pentecostal. When you do the research, every religion on this planet Earth was handed to the so-called Negro and Hispanic man. And we were forced to worship it. They whipped our backs to worship a white Jesus. But they never, never opened up the Bible and read it in its entirety. Because when you go to the book of Job 30 verse 30, he tells you he's black. Right. When you go to the book of Jeremiah, the 14th chapter tells you the Jews are black. Adam, the first man, was formed by the dust of the ground. We know what color the dust of the ground is. It says Christ was so black, it looked like he burnt in a furnace. They call um, um, Simon in the book of Acts, they called him nigger. Mm. The word nigger is actually in the Bible. But because we could not read or write, we couldn't find out for ourselves. Now there's no excuse. Now the so-called black and Hispanic man can read. We have the Bible at our disposal before the Most High shuts this whole world down with a loud bang. So now we have no excuse. So yes, it's faith-based. However, we are that evidence. The evidence is all around us. All you got to do, brothers and sisters, is do the research. Okay? And we can help you. Follow us at israelunite.org. You can follow our YouTube channel at IUIC Dallas. Follow us at IsraelUnite.org. And we also have a YouTube channel, IUIC Dallas. We have a IUIC Dallas Facebook and Instagram as well. Well, hey, Cap, I appreciate you guys coming on here. Yes, sir. Thank you for I having promise us. I promise we're going we gonna to do this again because I, I think it's a lot more that we can scratch on the surface. I didn't even get to the fringes. I mean, you know, it's a, a lot more the holidays, the festivals, and, you know, birthdays and all that stuff. We, you know, we didn't get a lot of things we didn't get a touch on, but I'm definitely going to have you guys back. I appreciate you all being open and honest. And again, y'all, this is Mogul Woo's Only, the podcast with your boy Big D the Mogul. Y'all know what it is, man. Go subscribe, comment, share, rate, all that good stuff. And we see y'all soon. Shalom. Peace. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.